Good morning. Welcome to our worship here at Ridgecrest United Methodist Church in the high desert of California. And for those that are participating uh, online, um, we have a special Sunday uh, today because we're celebrating Holy Communion, but also we're recognizing our graduates. Um, and so we'll have some of our high school graduates up here, and then I will uh, list off and we have the list of some of the, the college graduates and explain a little more detail about what they are doing. Our announcements are in the bulletin and just uh, to highlight in a couple weeks on June 18th, which is Father's Day, we're going to have a luncheon, a uh, free luncheon after worship. Um, and it will also be a special Sunday because our music team is going to be leading us in, in worship that day as well. And if you also see the notes about staff notes, you'll see that not this coming week, but the next week I'll be at the California Pacific Annual Conference from Wednesday through Saturday. And so lo and behold, that Sunday is when the Music Sundays team's going to be. So thank you for covering that for me. So um, in that way, you can see the Announcements about some of the classes. Some of the classes will be wrapping up here for the summer break as well. Um, and I think that's all the announcements except for we have Amy who's going to say some announcements about Vacation Bible School. Good morning, church. Good morning. I am Amy Achoa. And I realized that this was my 23rd year doing Vacation Bible School at this church because I started when I was a teenager. <laughs> that is really cool because this year's Vacation Bible School theme was Psalm 23 in 2023, and it was my 23rd year. That's just cool how that works out. <laughs> So I just wanted to give a praise and a thanks to God and this congregation for hosting Vacation Bible School. We welcomed 28 children to our campus the past four days, and it was just so great to open the Bible and to explore and share about God's great love. And actually, the Psalm 23 theme was all thanks to Laura Miller. So Laura, thank you for that awesome idea. It was just really great to have that experience with the kids. Um, now, to embarrass the volunteer staff, if you volunteered at Vacation Bible School, would you please lift a hand or please stand so we can acknowledge you. Lift your hand higher, higher. <laughs> I cannot do this alone, and it really does take uh, the heart of our uh, adult volunteer staff to make Vacation Bible School possible. There were eight of them, including one teenager who we gave the most work to. <laughs> so, thanks be to God for our volunteer staff, for everyone who donated um, financially and offered your prayers, um, and let's do it again next year. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. And now we're going to embarrass Amy. <laughs> oh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> we just really want to thank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm cutting across the, <laughs> the camera. We just really want to thank Amy for all the work she did. She created this curriculum. And uh, I think the staff, we all had as much fun as the kids did. And I know the kids had a ball this week. Mm -hmm. Everything we heard from the kids and from parents was how wonderful Amy is and how she has influenced their children in so many different ways. Oh, the only you. bad thing was is we weren't allowed to go down the water slide. <laughs> yeah, that was a problem. Or wear our bikinis. <laughs> uh, well. I know somebody who wore a bikini under <laughs> So anyway, thank you, Amy, oh, for all your you. work. And we are so loved so to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
please stand as you are able in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy are those who are called by God. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Here I am, send me. Send me, here I am. Our first song is How Great Is Our God, number 3003 in the worship and song. So we're going to take a, a moment here to do some recognition of our graduates. And you can see in the, the bulletin list, um, a list of graduates affiliated with our church. I'm going to invite um, those high school graduates who are here to go ahead and come up and stand here. And their families with them behind them. So... So they're going to introduce themselves, and we're going to go in alphabetic order. And the first we have is actually Jeffrey Brown, who's on the iPad here. <laughs> and is it, is it turning? And um, each of the grads that are here were given some questions um, and to answer. And so we're going to start with Jeffrey. Do you want to come and come up close put here? We're going to see if this works through technology. Jeffrey, where are you at? Uh, I am currently in Paris. Paris. Okay, so go ahead, share with us. Okay, uh, my name is Jeffrey Brown, and 
and as I conclude my education, I plan to continue down the path I am currently treading, an entrepreneurial path. I find myself uh, in immense joy and fulfillment in the world of business. I have witnessed firsthand the transformative power of an idea, the perseverance required to bring it to life, and the impact it can have on the lives of others. But there is another aspect of my life that has played a significant role in shaping who I am today, my faith in God. Since 2020, my journey has taken a spiritual turn, leading me to find solace and guidance in the embrace of the church community. I embarked on a path of exploration and learning, seeking to deepen my understanding of spirituality. Along this journey, some of my most cherished memories were created while singing in the church choir, immersed in the uplifting power of music and the sense of unity it brought. Reflecting on my experiences, I am reminded of the importance of pursuing what we love and remaining steadfast in our passion. And so, if I were to offer a piece of advice to the younger students here today, it would be this. Never let go of what sets your soul on fire. In a world that often tries to confine us to predefined paths, it takes courage to follow our dreams. But it is in this pursuit that we find true fulfillment and happiness. Cherish your passions, nurture them, and let them guide you towards a future where your work feels like a game. As I continue to grow both as an entrepreneur and as an individual, I am committed in further cultivating my faith. I believe that faith serves as an anchor during times of uncertainty, a source of strength when faced with adversity, and a guiding light when the path seems unclear. As we embark on our respective journeys, may we also always hold on to our passions, our dreams, and the faith that sustains us. Let us remember that by doing what we love, we inspire others to do the same. As we walk our unique paths, may we grow in wisdom, embrace new challenges, and build a brighter future filled with purpose, joy, and unwavering faith. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jeffrey. You, you're welcome to stay on and listen to the others, <laughs> or if you need to, to log off, so. <laughs> okay. So, Rayleigh is next, okay, but you don't have to do all of that. He had, he's in an earlier time zone, so he had plenty of time to, to you know, to do all that, so. So, if, do you want to use this or this? I'll just use that. Okay, so give that. So, we're going to go to this mic here. So, Wait, come. this is Rayleigh Taylor saying, I do not intend to attend a college, but um, that's just how I am. I don't really care for school. Um, <laughs> one of the memories from youth group would be going to Universal Studios with Miss Amy, and then um, just how I plan to keep growing on is when take it day by day, that's all you really can do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Lynn. And so we're actually going to go out of order. So, Patrick, are you going to come up? Sister, Louise is going to come up. So, Patrick Grant, son of Patrick Grant. Okay, get that? No, um, also graduated from Burroughs, and so we can just present this. You don't have to share any spoken That's words. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Thank you. And now we'll finish with Jonah. Hi, my name is Jonah Gilbert, and I will be attending the University of San Diego in the fall with a Naval ROTC scholarship there. Um, over the past two years, I've had the privilege of working at a Christian camp um, for middle school boys. So I've really got to kind of share the beauty of God's creation as, we, as we're outside. And I, we teach them kind of wilderness skills, axe throwing, wood chopping. And then at night, we do our um, worship services. Um, I would really encourage any up and coming students to really find something that you like to do and then 
f find out why you why you like to do it, and then kind of m make some stories, share some experiences, and really make friends who you can have good times with. So thank you, and for you that are the families up here, each in your own way provided, okay, sometimes a little heartache because you were challenging your graduate, but mainly support, so thank you for that. And so let's all of us um, bow in prayer for them at this time. Oh, holy God, we ask that you would bless those who are gathered here who especially have graduated from high school and in in Jeffrey's case, has actually moved on to other things. They will be moving on to different endeavors within their life. And so we ask that you watch over them. We know that you are always with them, but in those moments, perhaps when the way is, is shadowy or less clear, that you would just reveal in those moments the way for them to go and let them always know and receive the assurance that they are loved by you and that you have them each and every step of the way. Amen. Now you may return to your seats. Thank you. And so we also have uh, some college graduates and then some graduates of, of church folk who you provided some of the names, and just let me read these, and we're going to go through them as I, as I read the names as well. And if you, some of the families are here, I know, if you want to give a shout-out for them when I read their name, go right ahead. So first we have uh, Megan Branson. <laughs> Megan graduated from California State University Channel Islands with a Bachelor's in Environmental Science and Resource management, and she's working in Bishop this summer doing an internship. So we have Jeffrey Brown, whom actually I can still see there, and Jeffrey got three degree, associate degrees from Saracoso Community College along with his high school graduation. This was in this past year, actually, so it's since last year, 2022 graduation, we're covering it, um, in math, general science, and liberal arts. And so, Jeffrey... Uh, Tiana Cope graduated from Baylor University, both with a bachelor's and master's of business administration at the same time in accounting. And so she's on a path to become a certified public accountant. <laughs> Kelly Corzine graduated from San Diego State University with a bachelor's of science in kinesiology and pre-physical therapy. Tongue twister. Magna cum laude, and she's going to start a Ph.D. program in physical therapy um, uh, later on this year. <laughs> Sam Johnson graduated from Northern Arizona U University, and he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force, so he is soaring high, and his hope is, is to become a pilot. And Mackenzie Small graduated from Boise State University with a bachelor's in ad business administration and supply chain management. So her family's here well too. <laughs> and then also some of you, um, and we can just keep this slide up for a moment, Emma Ray Smith from Panamint Christian School in Ridgecrest the granddaughter of uh, Sandy Good and great-granddaughter of Mary, and I may not be pronouncing this, Mary Laracella. Okay. So congratulations, we have family here. 
Morgan Stein from Notre Dame High School in San Jose, California, who's the granddaughter of uh, Julie Staten. So. We have another McKenzie, Mackenzie Kovar, who's the granddaughter of Joe and Nell Kovar, who graduated from uh, Sh Shadron State University in Nebraska, and she's going on to med school in Nebraska as well. And so. And then Alan Hash, son of Misha and Keith Hash, graduated from the University of Texas at Austin with a degree in mechanical engineering. So. <laughs> and do we, do we have any others who, I didn't get information, but you're raising your hand. Yes, Paulo. If you shout it, I'll try to repeat it, because otherwise it won't be heard as well. So she's been serving as a local pastor in the Cal Nevada Conference in Northern California for several years, um, and so, but has gone on the track. And so now she's got that seminary degree, <laughs> which uh, means a little more, but also requires a little more. Let me just put it that way. So, so all right, any others? Okay. Well, that was a lot, and you can see there are some talented, skilled, awesome people who've done great things along life's journey and will continue to do so as well. And so we just give God thanks for all of them. And now I'm going to invite uh, Jonah back up, who is our uh, assistant in worship as a grad for our scripture reading. Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and avenger. When I look at your heavens to the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field and birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Matthew twenty-eight sixteen through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus has, had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember... I am always with you to the end of the age. The word of God for the people of God. So because this is Graduate Recognition Sunday, our, our thoughts are kind of focused on graduation and, and what that means for persons. Um, especially those who in the past few weeks or months or in some cases, um, you know, college graduations can really be across the board in terms of uh, the timing. Um, and so if this is not a graduation time for you, allow yourself to slip into your own memories of your graduation or a graduation that perhaps you attended of a family or a friend at some point recently, if not this year as well. I, thinking about this today, uh, it occurred to me that I have been attending um, high school graduations in some college for um, 30 years, mainly in the role as a pastor. And so I could go back and count it, but 
it's probably over 100 because in some years, church kids would be at multiple schools. And so either that same night I was going to multiple schools or at different nights in the week I would go. And it's just so awesome to, to share in that at a graduation and see the way different schools do it and, and highlight um, and celebrate that. At college level graduations, certainly, and sometimes at high school level, it's common to have a commencement speech, which if you think about the word, that's an interesting word because commencement, by definition, is an act or instance of commencing or beginning, or it's the ceremony of conferring degrees or granting diplomas at the end of the academic year. So in other words, a commencement is both an ending and a beginning. I mean, when we use the word commencement, probably in regular language, we might think of it as something that's beginning. I'm commencing my, you know, my freshman year. I'm commencing my tour of duty. But we use it in terms of graduation, it's usually an ending. And so as we celebrate graduation and as we hear, as we heard the scripture words today, we are getting both an ending and a beginning. If we were to compare Jesus' life and ministry on earth to an academic year, you could argue that the scene on the mountain in Galilee at the end of Matthew's gospel is the commencement exercises. And you can thank Jesus, at least in Matthew's gospel's version, that he gave a very short commencement speech. Just a few verses. He informs his followers, get your luggage ready, get your travel tickets ready, because you are going places. Now, yes, Jesus' words originally were to just a few people, but you know, they were remembered and recorded and put down, so they're now for all of us. They're for all people who have said, I'm interested in following Jesus. And if you have said that in your life or you're thinking about saying that, then those words at the end of Matthew's gospel, along with plenty of other words, apply to you in terms of going forth. And so for those who have graduated, you've completed one stage of your life, and now you move on to the next stage. Oftentimes, when you graduate, and particularly in college, of course, you intend to utilize the degree or the schooling that you took in order for your job. Now, it doesn't always work out that way, um, but usually, at least immediately, it does, and down the road, it can change. And hopefully, that schooling, that education will be a connection with a job, a career, employment that one will love, that they will blend together. I know I have been blessed in that way. I went to a military academy, and so I already had a job lined up, um, but it was a job that I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the Army, and not only that, I had a choice of, of what I could do in the Army, and I wanted to be an infantry officer, and I got that slot assignment upon graduation. And so when I graduated, I went out and I did that, but in the process of my uh, educational training and instructional branch, which was both academic and military training. There was one summer there, it was our second summer at the academy, and ROTC does something similar in um, which you go and you get training in all the different branches of the Army. So there's different branches. Um, I'm not going to name all of them. Infantry is the number one, of course. But that's, you know, that's my personal favorite, but you know, there's field artillery, engineers, military intelligence. I know that's an oxymoron, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, there's all kinds of branches. So in this summer, we would get exposed to these branches. So that was my first time riding in a C-130 military aircraft with those webs sitting and the loud propeller blast and going, wow, this is awesome. First time getting to fire all types of, you know, weapons and train and all this. That summer, I got to drive a tank. That is a cool thing to do, to drive a tank. I got to fire a tank. I got to fire artillery. I got to blow things up. And not just me, but all my comrades. We got to do all this stuff. Now, I realize here I am a 
pastor, and I'm mentioning this, but you've got to realize at that point in my life, that's what I wanted to do. So that was the coolest thing possible to be able to do. Wow. It was awesome. And that continued once I got to graduate and I went out. Now, that isn't to say that there weren't tough times. But one of the things that happened, actually it happened more than once, not only while I was doing the training that summer at the academy, but later on with, with comrades in arms, is we would talk and go, can you believe we get paid to do this? <laughs> to jump out of an airplane? I mean, we don't have to go to some skydiving school and pay money to do this. The Army will pay us to do this. Now, they require some other things, but, you know, it was awesome. <laughs> a lot of it was hurry up and wait, and it could be boring, and yes, there was risk involved, there was danger in that way, but that's, that's just a microcosm of life, and I look back on a lot of that and just am so grateful in that way. But later in my military career, my calling shifted from the military to ministry. And once again, I set off to work in an area that I wanted to do and to be in. It was just a different type of follow me. And so, once again, throughout my time as a minister, I've had those experiences where I'm just like, pinch me, I can't believe this. I'm doing Easter sunrise service on the beach on Kauai. More than once, I get to do baptisms in the ocean or baptisms, you know, here in a church. I get to do weddings on the beach. I get to have the holy moments with people in the hospital or at home who are near end of life and to be entered into those sacred moments and times in which it is sad, but also from my perspective of a minister, it's like, yes, this is, this is what I was called to do, and this is a privilege and an honor to do this at times. Each person and situation, of course, is different. There's tragedy, but there's rejoicing. And to be able to do this, I have to say, once again, pinch me. I get paid to do this? I am grateful. Near the end of my Army career, it was in, in the, the last few months, I was actually on one of my last field exercises, uh, and I had already made the decision that I was going to resign my commission to, to get out and to go to seminary. And I was sitting on a ridge top during a break in field training um, on the island of Oahu in the Kahuku training areas on the north shore of Hawaii. And I was sitting on the ridge top, and I was looking down on Sunset Beach. Maybe you've heard of that beach. They do lots of surfing competitions there. And it was below me. I could see people surfing. And out farther were whales spouting and sometimes breaching. And I can remember sitting there, and it was a combination of our scriptures today because it was like, Lord, this is so beautiful. This is glorious, this world. And I get, to, I get to see this. I get to rejoice in this. I've been able to be here in this place. I'm out in the field. I love being out in the field most of the time <laughs> in the Army. <laughs> most of the time. Well, okay, some of the time, I'll be honest. Some of the time. But that was a time it was like, this is wonderful. Your creation is amazing. But in that break, I was also contemplating that I was leaving this and going into something else. And so the words of Matthew 28 were kind of ruminating in kind of not a direct way. It's not like it was a specific quotation, but just this sense of call, and I am going to go forth. And I mention all that because for our graduates, but for you, whatever stage in your life, the hope is, is that you're going to meld those two together that somewhere along your way, you're going to be able to go, this is my work, this is my career, this is my calling, and it's going to join together, and you're going to be able to say, gosh, this is a holy moment. Gosh, this is glorious, and I get to be a part of it. I get to have a role in it, and this is what Christ is saying to his disciples and to all of this, that this, go and to all the world, help make disciples, 
Maybe you're going to be in the role of minister and baptize them. Maybe you're going to be in a role of a teacher and teach them, whether it's vacation Bible school or another class or a secular class, but by your, by your indirect Christian morals and your secular teaching, you're going to set a shining example for students to go, this is a person of moral fortitude that I can come talk to because they have character, because it's shining through in how you live your life. Or you're someone in a job situation and somebody comes in and you become a mentor or you help coach them or teach them and that's your role to be able to do that. True, at the moment you may not always go, oh yes, this is one of those moments. Oftentimes it comes afterwards. But it can also come before because you know that the commission has been placed on you as a follower of Christ to know, Lord, help me me in this way. Set this up for me because this is what I get to do, which is to love you and to love others and proclaim your name. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Help me share the meaning of this majesty of who you are and all I do. Amen.
come to a time in which we celebrate our joys and thanks and sharings and prayer concerns. If you have some, if you raise your hand uh, high, Jonah will come and bring the mic to you. So. And while he's going back, let me just lift up a Tina Frisbee who had a procedure this past week and the uh, procedure went well and so there's indications that it, it is doing uh, what it intended to do for her neck. So praise God. Asking prayers for our grandson, Gavin Bethel, and his parents, Sherry and Richard. Sherry's my daughter. Uh, last Sunday evening, Gavin was out goofing around with four of his buddies, and they had a single car accident. He was passenger and was ejected and took a heavy hit to the left side of his head and his shoulders and lungs collapsed, and he's in a coma this week, making small improvements, but uh, improvements nonetheless, but prayers for improvement and healing. Lord, hear our prayers. Others. I would like prayers for... Jerry Rambo, who's having his back surgery tomorrow, so prayers for a successful procedure. Lord, hear our prayers. I would like prayers for a speedy recovery for um, our granddaughter, Isabel. She was goofing around, I guess, in the basement and um, broke, fractured her sternum. Lord, hear our prayers. Hi, uh, my name is Steve. Some of you know me as the guy that uh, uh, broke his ankle about four and a half months ago. Uh, two surgeries later, I was able to walk into church today under my own steam, without a cane, without a walker, any wheel device. I feel I feel pretty emotional about it because I'm not going to be able to walk up and uh, receive communion. Praise God. Thank you. others. And let's go to God in prayer. O oh Lord, you are great and you are gracious and you watch over us and we ask especially that you watch over those of our our families, our grandchildren in particular, for some of us this week who have suffered, suffered injuries, and, uh, um, and we pray for healing um, from that which can be relatively minor as a broken bone to that which is serious with uh, uh, head injuries and uh, coma. And so we just pray for their healing. We pray also for uh, Jerry, his back surgery tomorrow. We thank you for the healing for Steve, that he continues to get strength and be able to, to walk along. We are mindful again of all those who have graduated and their families. We are mindful of our leaders in our nation. We give you thanks. We are mindful of those who are doing the work of Christian service in so many forms. Some of it's called and, and ordained and commissioned and paid and most of it's volunteer and so we are so grateful that each part that every person plays is part of your larger plan and so Lord help us to be mindful of this in all that we do and to go forth as your people we unite ourselves in our prayers this morning by praying the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
For those of you who are joining us online, this ends our live stream worship for today.